International Criminal Court should have jurisdiction on the basis of the Republic of Korea being a part of the International Criminal Court. Uh, I wait and see whether they will take that argument, but just in case they don't take that argument, there's also the possibility of using the possible ground of non-nationals. The International Criminal Court can also act in regard to non-nationals, countries, nationals of countries that are not parties to the International Criminal Court statute. Basically, the Security Council can refer nationals of countries that are not parties to the International Criminal Court, to the International Criminal Court. That's the easiest route. So I await to see whether that is a possibility for the future. It has been done, particularly in regard to Sudan. Sudan as a case study. So that's where we are at this point in time in terms of accountability. And I come next, finally, to the prospects for the future. Two angles. One is this issue today. Where are we prospectively? Well, I could take the easy option by saying this. My easy option is to say this. I work in the UN multilateral perspective, so I don't comment at all. And I'm correct from that angle, a normative angle. I don't generally comment on national legislation of countries concerning the DPRK. But let, let me take off my hat a little bit and just be an ordinary analyst as a friend of people from the North and the South. We know that the United States has legislation on this. We know Japan has. And we now know that this is up and coming. The value added of national legislation is that it can focus on various issues of particular concern to the country passing that legislation. Refugees. Finance. Allocations. Support by NGOs. And pressure for accountability. Specific issues such as abductions or those who are resident here in that country who went over there and wish to come back. These are aspects of national legislation that appear in those countries that have adopted the specific legislation. I would say that if this legislation is to pass here, it could concentrate on various issues, obviously, of concern to this country. We have remnants of the Korean War that still have to be dealt with. Prisoners of war from the 1950s, missing persons, abductions, and more. And we have, of course, today's issues. The question of humanitarian aid from south to north, the question of refugees coming in, what do you call asylum seekers or defectors? question of the national policy towards those in the north, as well as finance, financial and other supports for NGOs, as well as information system, communication in regard to what happens in the north. And I know that in the debate, I know that in the debate, you're also addressing the question of documentation, whether to have documentation and how to have it. The value of having Solid documentation on violations is that it opens the door to the truth. People's right to, to the truth ultimately and possible accountability for the future. So documentation in regard to what happens in the DPRK is very important to evolve as a solid base as part of the right to the truth and the right to remedy ultimately. And those remedies can vary ultimately. If and when the two careers are reunited, we will have to deal with this. Perhaps from a judicial angle, but from the experience of other countries, we have what is known as transitional justice as well. How to deal with a healing process. If you don't know the truth, you cannot heal properly. So documentation is important. And of course, representation from the country concerned as a voice through ambassadors, envoys, and the like, to the local community and to the world community. Those are aspects of national legislation that urge in regard to what happens. 
my humble conclusion on that, I respect the country's sovereign choices through Parliament as to whether or not they will have legislation. Bear in mind that legislation may also have value added, as indicated by me, particularly in the quest for the truth, the quest for remedy, and eventually also the quest for accountability and reconciliation. Finally, I will just sum up by highlighting some steps for the future. In my reports, there's always a final section that looks at their short-term and longer-term possibilities in terms of steps to the future. If you look at the UPR, Universal Pure Review, there were nearly 120 recommendations up for them to consider. I've limited mine to five short, ten long, and a few others for the international community. Let me just finalize with some five short ones. Number one, food aid is still important, and we welcome it, subject to monitoring. No access, no food, as a principle. But food aid alone is not adequate. We must rectify also the distortions of food distribution, as well as to ensure food security and reallocation of military budgets to be spent on the people. Food has to be based upon a people-first policy, not a military-first policy. Second, stop public executions. Stop executions. Stop the violations. Respect the range of civil, political, economic, social problems. Thirdly, don't punish people seeking to leave or people and people seeking asylum elsewhere. Please don't punish. Use humane treatment. Inform the authorities. Influence the politics. Fourthly, please settle satisfactorily the issue of foreigners and others abducted as an immediate concern. Negotiations have been there and they can take place. The six party talks also open the door a bit to addressing the abduction issue. And then fifth, please cooperate with the rapporteur and the UN system. My term ends in June. You cannot be a rapporteur for more than six years. I've done 11 reports so far. Please try to cooperate with the next rapporteur. The UN passed a resolution recently to continue the mandate, which means that this issue remains a very serious issue for the United Nations. Resolution passed recently. Those are short-term possibilities. In the longer term, please have a look in the report. And ultimately, to the world community, humane treatment, please, of all people from the north. Mobilize the UN and others to act well, effectively, using the total UN system and more. And finally, six years on, What's the secret weapon behind all this? There is no secret weapon. The rapporteur, 40 of us and more, dealing with the most horrific issues on earth, the rapporteur has no weapon. He only has a brain and a heart. In my prayers, I'm not very religious, but I do pray. I always pray for the people from the north. Ultimately, dear friends, human rights, democracy, peace are also based upon spiritual commitment. I'm not talking about religion. Commitment to people, people's dignity, people's rights, people's freedom. All these years, it's been an honor and a pleasure to help you. With the strength of the mind, with the strength of the hand that writes and types personally and with the strength of the heart.